busy. And at 8.30 a.m. she decided to call home, but Lee didn't answer. So she then called her mother to ask if she could check on Lee, um, because she'd only been alone for less than an hour at this stage. But her mother decided not to even wait for um, the grandmother to show up, and she headed home to check on Lee herself. She said when she arrived that the garage door was wide open and the light was on. The front door was open and when she called out for Lee, she didn't hear anything. And then she saw blood. She searched everywhere around the house and in the shed, but she couldn't find her. So she then called the police. And when the police arrived at the house, they immediately knew something was horribly wrong. Uh, investigators concluded that some of spatter indicated that Lee had suffered a head wound. Now, um, now, Lee's mother told police that a pair of bra and panties that Lee had recently gotten for her birthday, as well as a t-shirt and jeans, were missing from her closet. Uh, her reading glasses, shoes, and a sleeping bag were also missing. Now, aside from the blood, nothing in the house pointed to a struggle, and there were no signs of forced entry. She also said that it was the first time that Lee was home alone, but neighbors disputed this and said that Lee was home alone all the time and would always come visit them for someone to talk to. Um, so they searched a large area around her house on foot, on top of horses and with cadaver dogs, but they didn't find any trace of her. Now, due to the hurricane and the high winds, it was very difficult for the dogs to pick up a scent uh, of anyone, really. Um, now, police also made some huge mistakes in this investigation. Um, they later said that they were such a small station that they really weren't equipped to deal with something like this, and I get that. But, oh, well, I can't really judge them because this was potentially the first disappearance or one of the first disappearances they had ever had to deal with. Um, so they didn't tape off the house and several people just walked in and out, contaminating the scene completely. Um, the FBI became involved given the circumstances of the case and the fact that she was under 15 years old. Both her mother and ex-stepfather took a polygraph test. Now he passed, but her mother failed. So given that, they gave her two more polygraph tests to take, and she failed both of them. Now, her father also took a polygraph test, and he passed, but he wasn't even in the country at the time of her disappearance, so he couldn't have had anything to do with it. Now we all know that polygraph tests aren't very reliable, um, and they're mostly used as an investigative tool. However, she failed three, which is very suspicious. So police started looking at her mother. Um, rumors, r rumors also started surfacing about her mother, aside from Lee showing up to school with bruises and being left alone. It was also said that her mother did some strange things before and after Lee disappeared. The night before, she was seen in a local car wash alone. Um, like, what was she doing there in the middle of Hurricane Andrew, and where was Lee? She was also seen on the morning of Lee's disappearance, putting something in the trunk of her car and throwing something in the dumpster at work. Um, now, they investigated the dumpster. They didn't find anything of significance. They found some blood, but apparently it was dog blood. So, on September 9th, 1992, Lee's reading glasses were mailed to her house from the city of Boonville, and they were addressed to her stepfather, who no longer lived in the house. They also used almost twice the amount of stamps that were needed. Now, FBI immediately sent the glasses and the envelope to the crime lab for investigation, but they didn't find any prints or DNA on either the glasses or the envelope and the stamps were attached with water, so they didn't leave any trace. On November 11th, 1993, the coroner announced that remains had been, find, had been found in a nearby town and that they were officially identified as being Lee. However, just two days later, the medical, examiner, the medical examiner's office 
has retracted that and said they belong to a 27 year old. Like, how do you identify a 13 year old when it was actually a 27 year old? I find that so strange. Um, now, over the years, Lee's mother always maintained her innocence and said that she knew who did it. She said it was a man named Oscar Carnes. Now, Oscar was a Sunday school and vacation Bible school teacher at the church that Lee attended with her grandparents. He lived about a mile away from their house, and he rode horses at the stables that Lee also loved to go to. Now, Lee's mother found his behavior strange. She said that he wouldn't make eye contact with her um, after Lee disappeared. And he regularly asked Lee when she wanted to go ride on his horses. And Lee would, like, she said that Lee would have never opened the door to a stranger. But the front door was open and there was no forced entry. So she believes that Lee knew the person that took her. Um, nine months after Lee's disappearance, Oscar had abducted had abducted and sexually assaulted another young girl and the circumstances were eerily similar to the circumstances of Lee's disappearance. She was also home alone around 7 a.m. He went to her house and offered her a ride to school, which she accepted. I mean, he was a Sunday school teacher at a church, you know. Um, she trusted him. Uh, but he instead drove her to a remote area, sexually assaulted her, and then dropped her off at school. Um, so it's very possible that he did the same thing to Lee. Now half the people in the community believe her mother had something to do with her disappearance, and half the people believe that Oscar had something to do with her disappearance. I think what everyone agrees on, including law enforcement, is that Lee knew her abductor. So that's all the evidence in this case, so I'll get into some theories. So the first theory is that Lee was abducted by a random stranger in a crime of opportunity. With Hurricane Andrew, it could be that someone simply wanted to burglarize the house and accidentally hurt Lee. Um, but there were no signs of forced entry, and according to her mother, Lee would never open the door to a stranger. I don't think you can predict these things, but she was 13. Like, you know, that's usually old enough to kind of know. Um, not to open the door to a stranger. Um, but even if she did open the door, like, what was the stranger's motive just to break in? And, uh, they were surprised by Lee, like, they didn't know she was home. Or did they know she was home and that she was always their target? And then, um, if a stranger had accidentally killed her, why take her? Like, why not just leave her body? Um, and why take her reading glasses? Like, the reading glasses were a very personal item. And then why mail them back a few days later? Like, a, like the stranger theory just makes no sense to me. Then, some people think that Oscar is responsible for early disappearance. There's a lot of evidence to support this theory. They knew each other. She went to his Sunday school. And he assaulted this other girl in a very similar matter. But, um, the thing with the other girl is that he made no attempt to hide his identity. She knew exactly who he was. He didn't kill her. He dropped her off at school. Like, he knew he was going to get caught. So, and he pled guilty, and he was sentenced to 20 years for that. Like, Lee disappeared. Um, it seems... While, while the story seems similar, the outcome isn't. He, he had no intention of killing anyone. So I don't, it could be that he wanted to do the same with Lee and she panicked and there was a struggle and he accidentally killed her. But I somehow don't see it as the same uh, MO as to what happened with the other girl. So I don't, I don't, this isn't the theory that I believe the most. Um, the last theory, which is the one I believe the most, is that Lee's mother is responsible for her disappearance. And there's a few reasons for this. So, 
She was described as a clean freak. She was meticulous and she had a very bad temper. Now the glasses to me are key here because first of all, they're personal. Um, it had to have been a personal thing that was taken. And it also seemed like they were sent with the sole purpose of throwing police off their trail. So here's what happened. They were mailed from a place called Boonville earlier. Um, there had been a sighting of Lee in Boonville by a trucker. Now police investigated the sighting, found this girl, and it turned out not to be Lee, but someone close to the investigation, which is why a lot of people believe it's her mother, obviously heard about this and thought, oh, she was sighted in Boonville. If police never find this girl, if I mail the glasses from Boonville, it's gonna make police believe that she was in Boonville and it's gonna throw them off a trail here and lead them to investigate over there. So it was bad luck, I guess, for whoever did this, that they found the girl and it proved that it wasn't Lee. But at the time that the glasses were mailed, they didn't know this yet. So it seemed like it was specifically done to throw police off their trail. Um, so, and it was addressed to the stepfather who didn't live there anymore. So it seemed like it was purposefully done to put the spotlight on the stepfather. Um, and then there's also Lee showing up at school with bruises. Nothing says that she was like abused by her stepfather. She could have been abused by her mother. Um, and that morning, it could have been a physical fight that got on a hand and she accidentally killed Lee and tried to cover it up. Um, she was also the last person to see Lee alive and she failed three polygraph tests. Um, and the bad feeling that she had at work is also pretty suspicious. Like she literally walked through and had a bad feeling that something was wrong at home. I, I, I'm not questioning a mother's instinct, but I do find this very suspicious. Um, and detectives also said that it seemed like a cleanup attempt was made in the bathroom, and um, Lee's bloody nightgown was in the hamper. Like someone had actually not just cleaned up the scene, but put the bloody clothes in the hamper. Now, given what a clean freak her mother was, this points to her. And she was very detailed about the items that were missing from her closet. She knew exactly what underwear, what t-shirt, what pants, what shoes. She knew exactly what was missing. I think if someone broke into my house and took three pieces of clothing from my closet, that I wouldn't even be able to tell which one are gone. Like, that's very meticulous that you know that. And even detectives said that that stood out to them. Um, it just seemed like her answers were very prepared. So, I'm a little stumped on this. I, I definitely think the mother had something to do with it, but I don't know whether they had an accidental fight that morning and she tried to hide the body or since she was at the car wash the night before and there was no sign of Lee. It could have even happened the night before. Um, there is nothing that says that Lee, you know, was still alive that morning. It's only her word to say that Lee had slept in the bed with her the night before and that they had breakfast together, but we don't know if that's actually true. So let me know what you guys think. I find this case really fascinating.